A very unsettling trend is emerging. An alarming number of young people are dealing with a diagnosis they never would have expected, cancer. But why? What is driving this increasing rise in cancer cases? Breast cancer, colon cancer, skin cancer, brain cancer, I see it all. When I started working in radiation oncology over 16 years ago, I rarely had patients in their 20s or 30s. Rarely. And when we did, it was shocking. But unfortunately, it's become normalized because I now have two to three new cancer patients under 40 each day. According to the American Cancer Society, the incidence of most types of cancer amongst young adults has been steadily climbing over the past 30 years. Cancer has always been associated with aging, something your grandpa or your elderly neighbor has. But because we're seeing so many cancer cases in younger people now, it's raising some big red flags and researchers are starting to take a closer look at why this is happening. What are the underlying factors at play? There are also a lot of young celebrities getting cancer who are speaking openly about their diagnosis to spread awareness, which is amazing. We need more people to speak out and share their experiences to help bring awareness to the public that cancer isn't just a disease for the elderly. I have an Instagram account called Cancer Specialist where I follow a huge community of young cancer survivors sharing their stories and supporting each other. It's truly amazing what goes on over on Instagram, so please feel free to join us over there if you'd like. There are also a ton of new campaigns and health initiatives now that are raising cancer awareness by promoting a healthy lifestyle, encouraging young people to have a healthy diet, exercise regularly, and maintain a healthy weight. It's true that it's never too late to make healthy changes, but the younger you start, the better, because the choices we make when we're young have a huge impact on our health when we get older. Now, I'm not saying that all cancers are the result of poor diet or lifestyle choices, but it is said that the number one factor in the rise of cancer incidence is our modern lifestyle. We live in an era of processed foods, bad habits, and heightened exposure to environmental toxins, all the things that increase our risk of getting cancer. So it's no surprise that there's a surge of new cancer cases amongst people of all ages. Our poor habits are making us age faster than we should and get diseases earlier than ever before. When you eat foods that create inflammation in your body regularly, things like french fries, ice cream, or white pasta for example, you likely have more bad bacteria in your gut than good, which enters your bloodstream and can create systemic inflammation. Inflammation is the underlying cause of a ton of metabolic health conditions that way too many people are suffering from, and your risk of getting them significantly increases with age. But in terms of cancer, inflammation inflammation creates a very favorable environment inside your body for cancer cells to grow. This is why I'm always going on and on about the importance of eating foods that decrease inflammation and staying away from foods that cause it like anything refined or processed, especially white sugar, white flour, and saturated fats. One major problem is that snacking is so addictive. People love to snack, especially at night, on ice cream, chips, or cookies, processed foods that are laden with artificial additives. But not only that, a lack of physical activity, smoking, vaping, and excessive drinking can all further exacerbate our risk. While we've known for years that these are all detrimental to our health and increase our risk of getting cancer, the recent surge in cancer patients amongst younger people creates more urgency to promote awareness and the importance of making healthy diet and lifestyle choices for cancer prevention. These are things we can control. However, there are also things we can't always control, like the pollutants we're continuously exposed to in our environment that can cause cancer, or genetic predispositions and hereditary factors that can further increase our cancer risk. We know that having inherited gene mutations does make some people more susceptible to developing cancer at a younger age. Also something we can't overlook, something that doesn't get enough attention, is the amount of stress we all have in our lives now. The relentless increase in the pace of our society, the pressure to succeed in school or at work, and the pervasive influence of social media all contribute to a chronic state of stress and anxiety that can compromise our immune system and create systemic inflammation. So what is being done about the increase in cancer amongst young people? Well, you may already know that the earlier cancer is detected, the more likely you are to be cured. There have always been ways to detect cancer early through blood tests, but these are getting better and better all the time. There are several tests now on the market and some that will be emerging very soon that are able to detect cancer much earlier and with more accuracy. And they're not only useful for early detection, but also for those who already have cancer to see if their treatments are working or if their cancer has come back. There are dozens of different cancer biomarkers in your blood that these tests can detect. If your levels of certain markers are out of the normal range, it's a good indication that something's wrong and further testing needs to be done. But what's mind-boggling is that a huge percentage of doctors don't test for cancer biomarkers unless a patient is having suspicious symptoms, which totally defeats the purpose of trying to detect it early. 
Everyone by the age of 40 should start having certain tests done for early cancer detection, especially those who suffer from certain health conditions that significantly increase your cancer risk, like type 2 diabetes, obesity, or chronic inflammation. There are also other tests that you should have done, like mammograms for breast cancer screening in women over 40, but this age may vary based on the guidelines in different countries or your risk factors. Pap smears to detect for cervical cancer usually starting around the age of 18. A colonoscopy or a stool test for colorectal cancer screening is typically recommended for adults starting at the age of 45, but again, this can vary. And a less common one, which is a low dose CT scan for lung cancer screening. This test is done for high risk individuals like long-term smokers or factory workers. Now improving cancer screening is one thing, but in my opinion, we're not doing a good enough job at bringing awareness to how important it is for people of all ages to make healthy diet and lifestyle choices to reduce our risk of not only cancer, but a slew of other health conditions like heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and stroke, for example. Sure, cancer screening can detect cancer earlier, but it often doesn't fix the root cause of the problem because several experts have said that around 80% of all cancer cases can be avoided by making healthy diet and lifestyle changes. So addressing this issue requires a more effective approach that includes not only medical intervention from doctors, but also teaching people how to effectively change bad habits. Habits they've had for years, which for a lot of people can be really hard to do on their own. I think a lot of people have a pretty good idea of what healthy versus unhealthy food means, but you still see them in line at McDonald's or Burger King and buying soda and white bread from the grocery store because there's a big difference between knowing and doing, right? If you've been eating processed foods for years, it's all you know, it's your comfort food. And food manufacturers use ingredients like sugar, salt, and saturated fat to make their products taste good, so you'll buy them again. So if you're used to eating highly processed foods, it's not exactly easy to go from eating foods you find so tasty to eating broccoli or spinach. What I always recommend to my patients who hate eating vegetables is to sneak them into your meals, into your sauces, burgers, tacos, and slowly start to find healthier alternatives to your favorite foods. A great place to start is by swapping out any white bread or white pasta for whole grain options. You can and should also start looking at ways that you can slowly reduce the amount of sugar that you consume. If you haven't already seen my video on quitting sugar for 30 days, I'll link it below for you to watch next. But basically the idea is if you cut out sugar completely for four to six weeks, you can significantly reduce your cravings for it. Another big problem in our society is mindset. A lot of people think, I'm over 40, I can't run anymore, or I'm over 50, I can't do push-ups anymore. It's these self-limiting beliefs that are making you age faster. Not being as physically active as you should makes you age faster, and even having the mindset that you're too old for something also makes you age faster. Anyways, my point is that we should be putting more money into educational and support programs that help people start exercising, teach them how to add more whole foods to their diet, and eat less processed foods. We should be putting more money into these types of efforts for cancer prevention, not just screening for early detection. Empower young people with this knowledge from an early age. Promote healthier habits in schools. And get more doctors on board with talking to their patients about changing their diet and lifestyle. These are all crucial steps to resolving the issue. The rise in cancer amongst people under 40 is a complex phenomenon with a lot of variables like diet, lifestyle, genetics, and exposure to carcinogens. But one thing we do know is that several of these cases can be linked back to our modern way of life. But by addressing the interplay of all of these factors and by promoting early detection, we can hopefully soon turn the tide against this concerning trend. We can work towards mitigating the risk and safeguarding the health and well-being of future generations. Thank you to those who have already subscribed to this channel. I hope you found this video insightful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.